So we need to understand that, you know, it's going to be a people who are able to realize their responsibility in God. God is calling all of us to be a people who are free will hearted in these days, who are able to give our lives to the Lord in a, in a, as a free will offering. Free will offering. No compulsion, no push model, <coughs> but those who are able to freely give themselves to God and His work. It will be a tremendous joy to see. You know, it will be a tremendous joy for the Lord to see all of us who are really willing to give our life to the Lord as a living sacrifice. <coughs> Every area of our life, we want to offer unto God that God may be able to build us up together into a dwelling place for Him. Secondly, let's turn again to the book of Exodus chapter 35, the third principle, Exodus chapter 35, and verse 21. Being good to do so, brought an offering to the Lord, for making the for making the for the Lord, spreading his table, everything needed for using worship and for making the priestly garment. Yes. Yeah. Verse 21, Exodus chapter 35 and verse 21. And they came everyone whose heart stirred him up. And everyone whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation for all his service and for the holy garment. The second principle is that by a people stirred up. God is going to build this house through a people who have been stirred up. By a people who are stirred up. Verse 26 again. And all the women, sisters with them, whose heart stirred them up in wisdom, spun gold hair. And verse 30, chapter 36 and verse 2, And Moses called the Zalel and Aholia, and every white-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the word to do it. So again we see the word, whose heart stirred them up. Heart stirred him up. People were stirred up when they heard about God, that God wants to build a house for him. I do not know if your heart is being stirred up. And the one thing that if we are able to see God's desire to come and dwell in our midst, there is a stirring up that takes place within us. If you know God's ambition, God's desire, can you imagine this great and mighty God he wants to come and dwell and reveal himself through you and me upon this earth. It is not a small thing. This is what God wants to do. He wants to come and dwell in the midst of us and reveal his life upon this earth. And that thought is going to definitely stir us up. I'm sure that in my life, this is one thing that continually stirs me up. When I think of God's eternal plan to come and dwell in the midst of man and reveal himself in and through your life and my life. This is God's plan for you and me. And that should really stir us up in these days. When we think about God's sanctuary, God's dwelling place in the midst of us 
I'm sure it's not going to leave me in the place where that I am, but it's going to surely stir me up. And when people heard that God is going to come and dwell in our midst, their hearts were stirred up, and they all came, and they all came. <coughs> Everyone's heart that was stirred up, they all came together. Turn with me to Second Timothy chapter one and verse six. I will read from the King James. It says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on my hand. Paul is saying to Timothy that, Remember that, you know, it says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift. Stirring up. You know, sometimes we need to stir up ourselves. We need to stir up ourselves in the Lord. When we think about the things that God has spoken, it will stir you up in Him. You know, today we see there are many people who always talk about backsliding. Most of the people that I hear about in these days, I hear about them like they are backslidden. Backsliding seems to be one of the common diseases today among the spiritual people. But one thing I can really promise you is, if you will catch up with the vision of God's purpose in your life and my life, we will never backslide. I can promise you this. Why many people backslide? Why many people grow, grow cold in their life? Because they do not have a vision such as this. Their vision maybe is like now, I got saved, I will go to heaven. If that is the vision, well, then you have always reason to sleep. But if your vision is that God has saved me and delivered me from sin and curse, that today I may be a dwelling place for Him, then there is no place for you to backslide at all. There is no place. There's a stirring up that we need to see in our lives in these days. <laughs> you know, today when we look at the spiritual world, we can see that many people are stirred up on various other aspects of their life. But when it comes to the building up of the house of God, many are not stirred up in their life. Now turn with me to a few scriptures. Turn with me to the book of Haggai. Haggai chapter 1. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jotedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of uh, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. <laughs> then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring little. Ye eat, 
but he have not enough. He drink, but he have not till the drink. He clothes you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in their bag with holes. Thus say the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, say the Lord. He looked for much, and lo, it came, it, it came to little. And when he brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, say the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is weak, and he run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is saved from you, and the earth is saved from her food. And I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hand. Now here what we see is, when God has told them to build a house, they did not build, they began to dwell in their own houses. In verse 2 we read, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. You know, we see today the same thing happening. <coughs> People are busy building their own things. But there is no time to build the house of God. Nobody on the earth needs, seems to have the time. It is like, you know, one day, several years ago it happened, uh, there was a flood-like situation in Delhi. It was in 75 or 26. And uh, <clears throat> in the evening we gathered for a Bible study and a particular brother did not come. So we inquired from the other brother as to why this brother did not turn up for the Bible study. And the answer was, brother, his house is surrounded by flood waters. Then another brother asked this question, but did he go for duty today? And the answer was, yes, he did. So when it came to his duty, the flood water did not stop him. But when it came to the house of God, the flood water stopped. Do you see the difference? When it came to the purposes of God, when it came to building up himself in the things of God, then the flood waters came. The flood waters came. You know one thing, beloved? Today we see that, look at the world today. Look at many believers today. They all can spend their time, their effort, their energy to build a natural house. Isn't it true? All of us. I hope you don't get angry with me. Right? But, what we see is that when it comes to the building of the house, what do they say? It is not time to build. It is not time to build the house. Why they have built tattered houses for them? Says another translating day. If you have a living Bible, it's beautiful to read. Anyone is working in the Bible? No. Okay. But it says here in verse, verse 4, Is it time for you, O ye, dwell in your sealed houses? Somebody's got a 90 degree read. Read with your good news Bible. Living in your panelled houses. Yeah, living in your panelled houses. The Lord is questioning them. He says, Is it time for you to live in your panelled houses while my house is lying? Wait. Okay, so let me bring the heart of another man in the Bible. He was a shepherd boy. And now you got it. He was a shepherd boy. He was uh, elevated to a palace. And while he was in the palace, his heart was throbbing. 
His heart was yearning and he cried out and said, Lord, how can I live in this final house while you are in hell? You see the difference of the heart? That is the heart of a man with the gratitude towards God. Amen? <laughs> you know, one day he was dancing before the Ark of the Covenant. And you know, his wife, Michelle, she came and said, How foolish you are! Don't you realize you're a man of honor? You are a king! And you know what he said? You woman, you do not know what God has done in my life. Praise God. I was a shepherd boy. I was nothing qualified to be elevated to this throne here. But my God, He set me upon this throne. How can I but dance and worship my God? You see the difference of heart? But in Haggai, what we see, these men, they lived in their parent houses. But when it came to the building of the house of God, they said, the time is not <laughs> Beloved, what I'm trying to say is, God is going to lay hold all of your life. Can you say amen? Amen. God is not going to leave any portion of your life untouched in this business. God is going to lay hold of all of you, your whole life in this matter. So we see here, it is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste. It's a sad thing that when we see today, that we do not have a heart such as, such as that we see in David. Praise God. But God wants to give us a heart to just that in these days. A heart that is stirred up in the Lord in these days. A heart that is stirred up to build His house in this place. That you are caught up with this burden of God. That you are not going to settle down for your own things. While the house of God is lying in. But you would have a heart. Oh Lord, while I am in dwelling in this place, you are how is lying with. But we would really concentrate, we would stir ourselves up continually to give ourselves to the building of, of God's house. So when we look at the book of Haggai, we see that the prophet has to speak to them, reprove them, correct them, turn them towards the purposes of God. Today, in other words, the true story of the spiritual world is this. Men have built organizations. Men have made paneled houses. But the house of God is still lying on. Men have gone into uh, many methods of building and expanding their organization, unscriptural methods, begging and pleading, false reports, exaggerations, lying, and they travel land and sea to promote their new things. But we see the house of God is still lying. When many of them make great, great, uh, you know, um, boasting reports about their achievements, what we can see is the house of God is still lying. The house of God is still lying. This is what we see. But we got to be a different people. Amen. God is calling us to be a different people. Our first priority in our lives, beloved, is that His house should be built. His house. Now, if you read in Haggai chapter 1 again, let's come along. Let's follow the Spirit of God. 
Verse 5 he says, Now therefore thus say the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Change your ways. Turn from your ways. And you know in verse 6 he's saying, He has sown much and bring him little. He eats, but he has not enough. He drinks, but he has not filled his drink. Isn't it true today? Isn't it true today? Many people, even those who call them the believers, this is the condition. So much, but they bring out little. And then he eats, but do not have enough with all the overtime too. <laughs> it is not enough. Then what is he drinks, but you are not filled. There is no satisfaction coming. There is no satisfaction coming. What is? He cooks, but there is nothing warm. And he that earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with what? <laughs> with all your economics. <laughs> With all your principles, with all your management ability, what you are really able to see today is that everything goes into a big bag, of course, with a big full form. <laughs> and I see this, but truth, this is what is happening in the spiritual world too. As we have seen, as we have heard before, 20th century stands out for all kinds of spiritual activity than any other century. But we see all the efforts, all the great outreaches, all the great ministries that people are doing is all going into a big bag with it, or a big hole. Two thousand God saved. After six months you go there, not even one is found. <laughs> well, it all disappears. A big bag with a big hole. What is the reason for it? My house is lying to me. You are trying to show so many people got saved for what? For your success. Your success. Oh, beloved people of God, we need to be stirred up with one thing, and that is the house of the God's dwelling place. That should be the thing that should grip our hearts in these days and motivate us. And we see as we read on in Haggai chapter 1, verse 7 it says, Thus say the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, go up to the mountain and bring wood. Here you know, these people had all natural reasons. God is building a house. God is building a house. God is building a house that will stand. He is building by His plan with the lively stones of man. God is building a house that will stand. Christ is head of this house. Christ is head of this house. Christ is head of this house that will stand. He became the firm foundation for the church of his creation. Christ is head of this house that will stand. We are part of this house. We are part of this house. We are part of this house that will stand. We are in Christ joined together, and the storms of life will weather. We are part of this house that will stand. God is building a house. God is building a house. God is building a house that will stand. He is building by His plan with the lively stones of man. 
God is building a house that will stand. Christ is head of this house. Christ is head of this house. Christ is head of this house that will stand. He became the firm foundation for the church of his creation. Christ is head of this house that will stand. We are part of this house. We are part of this house. We are part of this house that will stand. We are in Christ joined together and the storms of life will weather. We are part of this house that will stand.